Here we have our electro spinning setup at Paul Aero Power Corporation in Newport Ritchie, Florida. Uh, on the bottom of your screen, you see a Glassman high voltage power supply. That power supply goes up to 100 kilovolts. We only use approximately 25 kilovolts at a time, possibly up to 30, depending on the application. Uh, at the top here, you see our syringe pump. It's currently rated at one and a half milliliters an hour, as you can tell by the LEDs lit up. Uh, we have in our syringe at the top connected by a tube to a metal tipped needle uh, a 25 weight percent solution of Torlon in dimethyl acetamide. In addition to that, there is 2% fluoropos, or what is believed to be fluoropos, that we are uh, trying to spin to see what differences it creates in the electrospun solution because we have already created a Torlon electrospun solution. Uh, the way this apparatus works is there is a high voltage dongle. Uh, if you see the black wire that follows along here, it comes up and we have an alligator clip that connects from the dongle to our syringe tip. And of course what we need to complete the circuit, as this is coming out at 25 kilovolts, we have an air gap uh, with a grounding plate connected to our ground source on our fume hood. Now I'm going to uh, attempt to show you the Taylor cone formation. It's really hard to see with the naked eye and I'm hoping that I'm able to get resolution with my camera here so that we are able to see Taylor cone formation. I'm going to start the pump up now and occasionally it takes a little bit of time because uh, there is some back pressure that can be created in the uh, lines because it's a pretty viscous solution. So actually let me get it from this side so you can attempt to see the formation of a drop and start up the power supply without turning on the voltage just yet. Okay. It's not focusing for you, but there, uh, there it goes. There's a drop formation. I'm going to turn on the voltage. And as you can see, there's a line created. Uh, I'm going to move the camera back a little bit because I have a fear that it's trying to spin onto my camera. Uh, you may or may not be able to see. Let me get a little bit of uh, resolution here. Focus on the center. Now it's really hard to get it. You may have been able to see it when I first started. But what's happening is you can obviously see that the drop has uh, changed shape a little bit. The reason for that is the electrostatic forces produced by our high voltage power supply is actually overcoming the surface tension of the solution. And in doing so, a cone is formed. And assuming you provide enough voltage, and I, I would surmise that 25 kilovolts is enough, uh, what happens is at the apex of that cone, which is known as a Taylor cone, at the apex of the cone a jet is pushed out and uh, you have three zones of, of where your solution goes. There's your tip at the apex of your cone, there's a, a zone in which there is a fairly straight line and you may or may not be able to see that here, it's kind of hard to tell. There's a small zone of a straight line and then it, the, what happens is the straight line, which is your solution being spun, begins to appear to splay out. And the, the reason I use the word appear is because it's been shown with other high-speed photos that it is actually just one, one uh, stream that is moving so fast the naked eye cannot see where it's going. But as you can see here, now that I'm moving down, that is where our grounding plate that, that is our grounding plate. That's where we now have electrospun nanofibers that have been collecting on the grounding plate for some time now. The uh, length of this video, which is currently at 4 minutes and 29 seconds. Uh, that's just a semi-quick demonstration of electrospinning. And uh, have a good one.